trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Our bestsellers, all they're hyped up to be. The Terrible Book Club explores whether or not you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. If you've ever seen a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Welcome to episode 78 of the Terrible Book Club. I'm Chris, and this is Paris. Hello. This is an in-person Terrible Book Club, a rarity nowadays. It yeah. happens to them sometimes, but, you know, if you hear any extra, like, echoiness in this audio track, it's because, once again, we're in one room together. Yeah, going back to our roots. Uh, yeah, I'm here to record some episodes tonight trying to get some recording done all in one shot uh you know eating some takeout reading reading book shots okay we'll get to that <laughs> we'll get to that because today uh, today you re- literally doing some moment, shots moments ago yeah <laughs> well yeah actually moments ago um i read this like two <laughs> days ago we read killer chef by james patterson Kinda? Uh, no, Jeffrey J. Keys. Okay. So, <laughs> you might be saying, bookshot? What is that? Like, did someone shoot the book? Or is it an alcohol-related thing? Do you shoot the book into yourself? Like, yeah, how does there's this so many ways you can interpret this. <laughs> if you... Paris, have you ever wanted to read, like, the back of a book, but it's the whole book? That's the back of the book? <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I never have. <laughs> have what? you ever sat there and been like, man, I have only two hours to read a book, and if I don't finish the book in that two hours, I'm just going to throw it away and forget it forever. I know myself, if I don't finish the book in one sitting, I'll just never pick it up again, so I have to finish it in one go. Chris, this is clearly catered to me when I was in the 90s hit movie Read with <laughs> Keanu Reeves and I had to read a book in under two hours or the library oh. would explode. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how this all started. I mean... If you read under one page a minute, the whole thing goes up. Let me tell you. I mean, yeah, like, I live I live life in <laughs> fast lane. Like, Yes. On the fast page. The fast page, yeah. Sorry, that was a terribly excellent. So, a bookshot, joke. it's it's not, uh, you know, an alcoholic drink in, I don't know, like the, you blend paper into alcohol. It's not that. Oh, I'm sure there's some it's, weird it's, restaurant. It's not that's doing a direct that. injection of book and word <laughs> into your bloodstream so that you get smarter or something. You know, I'm sure that's going to be a future thing, right? Like, we just, it's an Amazon Kindle, it's, it's just a syringe. <laughs> Full of like a weird anti-vax screen that just got published. Yeah. So you just instantly know all the stuff that some weirdo decided to release for free. Oh, that's horrifying. Oh, God. well, it's not that. I'm uh, so there's a little story behind how I came upon this, or we came upon this rather. Um, as as I mentioned in previous Terrible Book Club episodes, um, I have decided to take Terrible Book Club out onto the streets pound that pavement and find these books myself instead of just relying on Google searches for worst book romance or going to Amazon and just attempting to slog through their awful search system. Oh, yeah, which we which we discovered the depths of yeah. on the last episode. True. None of that. I'm going out there and I'm hunting for these books on my own. And one of the ways I decided to do this is um, there's a bookstore in Harvard Square called The Coop which we've both been to a handful of times. Mm -hmm. I was in there buying the latest Expanse book, or at least like trying to look for it or something like that. I didn't buy it there, actually, but um, I was in there for some other book-related reasons. Oh, I think you were buying a Rebecca book. Yes. Yeah, you were buying a gift for Rebecca. Yeah. And also, um, I decided to start looking for terrible books there, and I was kind of just looking around at the whole fiction section. It's, It's huge over there. Like, how... This is kind of the service we're providing. There's so goddamn many book in store. Yes. How, how am I supposed to choose? 
So Chris found a, a very helpful uh, bookstore worker. I physically went up to this person and I said, hey, you see a lot of books in here, don't you? <laughs> Oh, wow. That sounds like the start of a really bad pickup line. That person was probably terrified. No, I was like, well, I mean, you must see a lot of the stuff that comes through the shelves is how I really put it. And um, she was like, yeah, because at first she asked me if she could help me find something. And I said no. And then, like, I thought a minute and then I <laughs> went up to her after. And I was like, Actually, <laughs> helpful person. I was I was like, have you ever seen something come through here that you were like, who would read this? What, why is this here? I don't understand who would be buying this. Yeah, like, this is an embarrassment to literature. <laughs> and at first, she, like, she thought I meant, like, I don't know how this miscommunication happened, but she thought I meant, like, books with bad cover art or something. Oh, oh. So she started showing me, like, oh, there's, like, that weird, like, claymation style that's on some book covers now, which is, like, very flat-colored, like, kind of yeah. look. And she said she hated that, and I was like, no, you don't understand I'm looking for a book that you think, like, you really don't understand. I'm looking for a book where the inside is trash. Yes, it's the inside that counts <laughs> yes, here. Yes, yes. Not the outside. All, and I, but I did say, although a bad cover, like, a really bad cover is acceptable, but yeah. not quite just bad art like that. Right. And she was like, oh, you know what? Uh, come over here. And she brings me over. She's like, the, these things, you know, like, James Patterson, James Patterson, he's, like, releasing, he releases a novel, like, every three weeks, she said. Literally every okay, three so weeks. so he's not a person. He's some kind of alien hive mind. He, he's some kind of, like, ghostwriter, like, publishing thing you can yeah. write under. And she takes me to these book shots, <laughs> which she describes as, like, they're, like, summaries of books instead of real, like, actual books. And that's indeed kind of what they're marketed as. Um, thank you, helpful lady, who said, I don't understand why anyone who wants to read, like, books is going for this. Yeah. I yes. think she thought it was a summary of other books, but it is in fact not that. So I'm going to take you on a journey to the frequently asked questions page of the bookshop. Well, well, Chris, why don't, why don't you read the back of it real quick? And because that's I read the back of it and I was like, "What the fuck?" Is okay, this? it's uh, Killer Chef. Eat, drink, and be murdered is the headline, and the back of the book says someone is poisoning diners in New Orleans' best restaurants. Now it's up to Chef and Homicide Cop Caleb Rooney to catch a killer who has an appetite for revenge. That's fucking it. Yeah, they, no, but the, the ribbon on the back. Oh, the ribbon. I yeah. see. The, the the promo for book shots. Yes. Lightning fast stories by James Patterson. <laughs> Over so quickly you barely didn't even notice he got inside you. <laughs> Novels you can devour in a few hours. Impossible to stop reading. All original content from James Patterson. Why is the original content qualifier there? Yeah, also, why does it keep talking about James Patterson when it is written by Jeffrey Keyes? I don't understand. So I think James Patterson is like the publishing arm of whoever, like... I just, is James Patterson real? Does anyone know? There's I, a picture of him on the bookshots.com page. doesn't matter, page. Chris. They can have a picture of anyone. I don't think James, I think James Patterson I have, I'm pulling up, here's this very contemplative man here. That with his is a crisis author, Chris. <laughs> that is... Fake not, bookshots. Fake news. Not a real person. Okay, so let's go to the frequently asked questions page, because I'm sure people ha always have a ton of questions about these uh, things. First question, what is bookshots and how does it work? Let's face it, far too many books are far too long. <laughs> they start out great, but before you know it, you're bogged down with characters you can't keep straight, mind-numbing descriptions, and meandering flashbacks. Okay, they're a little right because that is sort of what Malatin is like, but it's good. You try to resist the urge to turn on the TV or scroll Facebook while the voice in your head grows louder with every page. Cut to the chase! Just tell me what happens! <laughs> Wait, so you're like, a, like all you care about is like the, the ending raw of the book? Pl yeah, the raw, raw fucking like... Raw I don't need any of these, raw like, climax! Yeah. <laughs> I need a raw climax! <laughs> I'm a reader, Chris! <laughs> Just give me the climax! James Patterson's... Uh... <laughs> This episode has already had me screaming. James Patterson's lazy hand job to your mind while he... Because you asked nicely for a quick one. It's just going to take five minutes. Oh, God. Oh, James Patterson feels your pain. Introducing book shots, lightning fast stories under 150 pages, more spellbinding than the latest blockbuster movie. 
Book shots will keep you on the edge of your seat from the first page until the shocking finish. Yeah. Uh. Compact enough to take anywhere. I'm so fucking sick of these huge books <laughs> that I have to stuff into my backpack. I can't fit any of my other stuff in there. Water bottle, gone. I'm dehydrated while I'm trying to read this book out in public. <laughs> yeah, it, like I can't my- believe we haven't figured out a better way to take <laughs> books with us everywhere. It's almost like we need a solution. Yeah, well, it's also like an app that you can buy these things from. I don't think we had to buy this hard copy. But whatever. It was under five bucks and the lady pointed it to me. I'm going to give her some business there. Yeah. Will book shots become full-length no- books as well? Ask the frequently asked questions. <laughs> book shots are written to be thrilling reads that fit your busy life. You've got too much shit to do and you can't come back later. Why would you come back to a book later? I, and yeah. you've forgotten everything. As soon as I put a yeah. book down, Paris, it's gone. wiped from your mind. It's erased. <laughs> that's why so many times in Terrible Book Club history, I said, well, I did read this a week ago, and I completely get some shit wrong. Yeah. I know that's happened before. We have no plans to publish Bookshot's originals as longer editions. Some are being developed for the big screen, however. No! Please don't. Oh. I, the Killer Chef movie no. is on its way to you. Oh, God. I hope um, not. How about this question that I spotted? I'm sight impaired. Why do audiobooks cost so much? Like, okay, I am sight impaired, but I've also heard of the fucking library. Yes. And also Perkins audiobooks for the blind, which they used to send to me until I was like, actually, I can see enough to read. You guys should be sending this stuff to someone else. But I did have like cassettes of like early like audiobooks on cassette, like originally. Yeah, I mean, there's so, I mean, oh, I don't want to say that there's like plenty of resources, but there are resources. It is pretty weird that. I don't think uh, I don't understand yeah, why I like know. why but why is the sight impaired thing with why do audiobooks cost so much? Yeah, I, not all blind people are poor. I mean, yeah, it's tough to get work sometimes when you're visually impaired. Let me tell you. Uh, yeah. I'm right there with the sympathy for you guys, but at the same time, why does why why isn't why doesn't it just what are there audiobooks? Why does it have to imply about the cost of audiobooks? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I also guess they have this nice program where they give, you know, the visually impaired some cheap or free books which is fine and cool yeah that's it's just, good it's a weird, but why frame it this way i don't know maybe maybe because their target demographic skews a bit older and generally you know a lot of people tend to lose their sight as they get yeah. older degenerative you know anyway uh, a maybe, little bit, maybe that's just a guess yeah a little bit more on book shots this is an article that i found james patterson says he'll disrupt reading by writing shorter books <laughs> He's going to fucking upend the whole thing. Wait, by... so so if none of these people heard of a novella or a short story, like, is that, they're just like, no, they're short books. These it's something aren't, else. Do it's these, brand new. These aren't novellas, Patterson clarifies, nor are they just short, regularly paced novels. Rather, he said, reading a book shite, book shot, book shite, I almost said. I mean. Is like reading a hit movie. Fast paced, economical, with no meandering. Like, they're just trying to dumb down books as much as humanly possible. I just don't understand. I will say that reading this book is like reading the back of a book, but for 120 pages. Yeah, it really is. There's no depth or substance. It, it's like pithy. Uh, you know, they try to pull out your heartstrings with, like, bullshit additions. Even more than that is is the tendency for it to be, like... In the middle of a chapter, it'll be like, and there's only one detective who can solve the case. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Caleb Rooney, who we should start talking about yeah. because it's been like 10 minutes and we haven't even talked about so the content here. So bookshots are fucking ridiculous. I mean, I think that it's just another example of a company trying to reinvent something that already exists. Shoot me in the face with words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like... End like, it quickly. <laughs> like, guys, short stories and novellas already exist. Trying to say it's a book shot. Oh, we're gonna just read the publishing. It's like no, it's just a short. But story. what is the shot? Is, is the shot in this in this marketing <laughs> thing like? Is it a, like a it was fast like a gun? Is it a, yeah, a hit like, like a drink? Or is it both yeah, of those? Yeah, and none of I those? guess. Yeah. Speaking of, I'm gonna start drinking before we. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we made ourselves some uh, seltzer and vodka for this uh, this episode. I just read the book shot. I just got oh just oh hit in the chest. You know, explosions resounded behind me as as the plot punched it's into me. It's supposed to be a fast-paced thing. So, anyway, Killer Chef. Um, there's not even really a Killer Chef in it, I think. There, uh, there's implied Killer Chefs. Yeah, so we didn't even really discuss our normal stuff at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, it's fucking really late into the show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you already know why you're here. Uh, if you don't, we're the Terrible Book Club. We intentionally choose to read books that we think will be bad. Rather than the traditional method of reading, which is where you choose books you think you will enjoy. Um, and uh, 
Sometimes we are pleasantly surprised. Most of the time we're not. Obviously today, not surprised, not pleasantly surprised by this. Uh, this sucked. No. Uh, <laughs> content warning. I mean, obviously we swear a lot normally. Um, barnyard language. Yep. Bar- barnyard language all the time. Just living the in the barn. The barn door is wide open. Oh, yeah. Everyone's in here. Fucking chickens clucking <laughs> constantly. There's hay everywhere. Just how we do. Um, there, we do discuss um, poisoning. So murder by poisoning. We've got a little bit of mention of drug use and guns, which we've kind of already been doing, so sorry, we fucked this order up today. Uh, There's really, really mild uh, cut-to-black sex scenes, and I think that's kind of it. Because no filler, Paris. Yeah, there's really nothing nothing very exciting. Just get, just, you let you know that they fucked, just letting you know, and move on right away. I mean, which, like, I, I mean, if you've listened to the show before, I'm actually fine with that. I'd rather that than the Outlander brand of things, you know? Like, we talk about about books that are too goddamn fucking long. I was in there buying an Outlander book. Oh, Betrayer for Rebecca. Betrayer. She's on like book six now. That's the they're the opposite of a book shot. Yes, Let me that's tell what you, I just said. The, <laughs> needlessly long. The thickest of books. They're so juicy. The thickest of sex <laughs> scenes. They go on for fifty goddamn pages. Let me tell you. I'm not. 100%. No, 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 no. I have to have my Outlander rent. Okay, so a couple of years ago, my wonderful friend Amber, Amber, I love you. This is not a not a shot against you, but I'm I'm at. It's Amber. a book shot against her. Yeah, I'm at Amber in Scott's house, uh, and she's just like, hey, uh, I know you like historical stuff. Like, why don't you check out this book? And I was like, all right. Like, I had no fucking idea what Outlander is. This was maybe like 10 years ago. I take it home, and I'm like, because she said it was like a historical. She was like, oh, there's like time travel. And I was like, oh, sick. Like, had no idea about the sex shit. And literally the first 50 pages, it was just, it was just, oh, they woke up and fucked. And then, like, something else, oh, they fucked again. And then they kept fucking, and I was like, I can't Did do Did you this. get to the part where they go to a, a Scottish castle, and they fuck in the Scottish castle? Because that happened in the TV show. Uh, probably, because it was, like, the I just I dubbed put it in... Castle Cunnilingus immediately, oh, because they just... Oh, hey, I wouldn't mind living there, to be fair. Um, or even visiting once Imagine in a while. Imagine if your historian boyfriend took you to an ancient Scottish castle, and the first thing he decided to do was sit you on a table. An old fucking <laughs> table that probably has some, like, really... <laughs> Tennessee nails in there. And just <laughs> no, it's great. It gives you a little, little excitement. Okay. You know? Danger great. is that it helps. <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't, be... don't shake too much now. <laughs> I want to be at risk of getting a centuries old illness while I'm fucking. <laughs> yep, that's it. Uh, anyway. Have I got the place for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, I can't handle books with that much detailed sex in them. I just can't. So sorry, Outlander. Sorry, Amber. Uh, I anyway. just couldn't get there. Couldn't get there. <laughs> Good thing bookshots are here to get you there quicker. <laughs> yep, good thing. You know, I, I put Outlander down and Bookshot was there just to jerk me off in the five minutes. The two-punk chump of novels, James Patterson, is here to help you. <laughs> anyway. So, so speaking right. of two-punk two pump chumps. Caleb Rooney is our main character, the killer chef, because he owns a food truck called Killer Chef. Right? That's the name of the uh, truck. Yeah, yeah. So here's the He's thing. He's in New Orleans. Yeah, There's a food yeah, truck. so here's the thing. So he owns a food truck that's popular, that's open every day, with his ex-wife. This is, like, revealed later on, but we, we don't have... I mean, and by later on, we mean in five pages. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so, you know. So he operates this very popular food truck, again, that Lines is open. Lines down the street. Gypsy yep. bands playing outside. It specific, uh, specifically says that, I think. Uh, th- that word is used in yeah, the yeah. book, and I was going to talk about how it's yeah. not cool to use that word. Yes, so. that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, but that's what it says. Yep, they, yeah, they talk about... Uh, so, but there's like a whole circus outside the truck, it says. Well, because it's New Orleans, so, you know, it's right down down in the French Quarter, or, you know, it's all touristy and shit. And um, so, again, all right, this man operates a full-time food truck with his ex-wife as his only partner. They have no other employees... He is also a detective. (laughs) For the New Orleans Police Department, really putting double hours in, except he totally screws over Marlene, his ex-wife and food truck co-owner, by having to leave to investigate murder cases, which probably puts a fucking damper on the food truck sales. Yeah, I just, and actually, it specifically says that way later in the book. It's like, yeah, we lost hundreds of dollars because you had to go investigate this fucking murder. And it's like, okay, I guess... Pick I, one. Yeah, I, get, I just don't believe that any person could be both a detective and a full-time chef. Who like, wants to put with simultaneously two different kinds of heavy stress? Yeah. Yeah, it just seems... 
it makes no sense. So that immediately makes this it's book trash he's so to me. So passionate about oh. food. Oh, and he's also Paris. he's also incredibly hot, by the way. And, and Chris, Chris, how many women want to fuck him in this book? All of them. Any? <laughs> no, no, you missed. There's one who doesn't. There is one who doesn't. He, she's like the IT lady at yeah. the police department, and she's over sixty five, therefore unfuckable or something. Yeah, literally every other woman in this book is fawning, throwing at him. themselves at oh, Caleb. That eyelashes. There is no such thing as a lady who doesn't want to bone down with him. Mm-hmm. Um, include yeah, even his ex wife a little bit. Yeah, like it's even just... though they got divorced, like does she have to be his ex wife? This book would have been fine without that being his ex wife. Yeah, I don't know. I, no I mean... difference would have been made except it's just like a little extra quick way to like make it more deep than it really is at all. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't need to be there. It also makes the situation even more unbelievable, right? Because like, so you're a you're a sexy cop chef. Who also runs a business with his ex-wife. Like, I just, I don't know. It seems weird. But she likes to use your hot looks to get more sales of the sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. So, immediately this book is off-putting to me. Just for that alone. And then they try to, they try to make Caleb um, likable by giving him a quirk. Chris, would you like to tell us that quirk? Every so often, Caleb has a nervous tick or like a, just a thing he likes to do, which is to... Reach into his pocket, which has a plastic bag of loose, raw jalapeno peppers <laughs> that he will periodically crunch on in such periods like during a food rush, be- while he's trying to think about who done this murder here, before loading his gun and, like, <laughs> bursting into a, 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 yep. a crime scene or something. Oh, let me read my favorite jalapeno eating scene. So once again, this is a chef and detective just constantly wandering around with a bag of fresh jalapenos in his pocket that he eats. There is one moment where he's, gloves. where he's out of jalapenos. Yes. And it's like this, oh my god, I can't believe I've been caught with my jalapenos down or whatever. So my favorite uh, jalapeno scene is when uh, more people have died and he's trying to comfort someone who witnessed the deaths. He says, it's going to be okay, Mikey. Reaching into his pocket, he grabs a fistful of jalapenos. Which he crushes between his fingers and rage. <laughs> We're gonna get this son of a bitch. I know we will. <laughs> like, hey, you've got jalapeno juice all over your yeah, hands. Yeah, like, like that just seems comical to me. That's not serious. You're gonna be fucking. Also, you're me. like fucking a whole lot of ladies in this yeah, thing with, with jalapeno, jalapeno juice all, all right, over your face. All, right, all right, yo, let me. All right, we're gonna talk about the realities. Safety, for, safety first, Paris. Seriously. Like this is a PSA. If you're having hot, spicy anything. Wash your goddamn hands. No, but like, like wash your hands so well that your hands are bleeding and raw because you wash uh, them so good, Paris. Dude, like, uh, all right. So they're painting this like sexy detective guy. By the way, he's also fucking everyone related to this goddamn crime. He He goes home with two two women. Yeah, two women that are have like a boy, an ex boyfriend that was murdered by poisoning. Because here's okay, here's the thing. Just so we can set this up really quickly, people getting poisoned at restaurants. They're eating dinner. All of a sudden, they just fall over, choking dead. Those are the murders. It yeah, happens there are three, three times, three sets of couples. Yes, of, of he- he- heter- heterosexual couples, ma- men and women. It's that's it. Like you don't need to know anything else about. Yeah. The okay. Plot. Continue with our PSA about. Yeah, and so like, spicy fingers. So this guy walking around with raw jalapeno fingers all the time without gloves, like. I mean, these poor women. L- l- all right, I've I have been this poor woman in my lifetime. Sure, the date of that hunky detective chef, Paris. No, no, I <laughs> no, that's not no, it's not who it was. Um, you dated an actual jalapeno once. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I dated somebody who used to be a chef. Uh, no, so uh, yeah, one time, uh, my ex boyfriend and I made dinner. And uh, I really love hot peppers, so I always have them in the house, and I cook with them fairly regularly. And, you know, we thought our hands were clean, and, um, no, no, I I cannot tell you the agony of having jalapeno residue on your vagina. It is the fucking worst. I have never cried so much in a shower before. That's what the title really means, The Killer Chef. He's the... He he kills you by... <laughs> like, that would have been a better murder mystery. Oh, like burning women with yeah, all Like chemical man. burns. Oh, God. Oh. I would have... That... There is a mystery, right? Yeah, there. there's a mystery. Not just random poisonings to in restaurants throughout the city. How did this woman's vagina melt off? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll never know. Uh, but Hold yeah. on. Um, <laughs> 
jalapeno. <laughs> oh, God. But no, no, seriously, that shit was excruciating. Uh, Wash your hands if I, you're having spicy yeah, food. Yeah, dude, that was, that was a nightmare. Or at least, I don't know, eat more spicy food when you're single, I suppose. But even then, that's dangerous, too. Yeah, I've got, I've got jalapeno on my nose and my eye. Oh, just, this oh. man is walking around at all times. Yeah. Jalapeno it up. Yeah. All just, over. He does no mentions of hand washing ever. No. Nope. No gloves that he. I don't even think when he's handling food in the food. I think at one time. They mentioned, mentioned gloves once, but mostly. Yeah. So I don't know. He's just getting rubbing jalapeno juice everywhere. Like, what the fuck, dude? This makes no sense. On women, crime scenes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like, these poor ladies. Anywhere. Oh, man. Anyway, Detective Hunk Chef. You know, probably should have put a disclaimer at the beginning that I was going to tell people I got jalapeno juice <laughs> in my vagina. We're going to talk about it. Well, maybe we'll we do, do a, our maybe, best with these content. Maybe we'll warnings. do a we, Paris of the Future is here to tell you that. It's always a free for all over here at our uh, Club. Man. That's including the barnyard language, I think, caveat. Yeah, so yeah, just but be yeah, prepared. I mean, yeah. And this is a public service that we're doing for our listeners. No, I'm serious. Like, you're like, oh, I washed my hands twice. No, keep f- putting them in some baking soda. <laughs> scrub that shit with sand. Bury your hands and say yes. <laughs> yeah, anything to get get all that residue off. Just don't. Okay, anyway, back to the book shot we have before us. Yes. There's really not a lot to be done here because there's not a lot up here. Let's focus in on jalapeno in the pocket to, to begin with. Like, I, How many do you have? He seems to have a lot of them. Pass. Yeah. It's yeah. not like he's got two or three and he's like nibbling on them throughout the day. He's popping them whole hog. Right, right. So how many could you possibly fit he's in your pocket? talking about pocket? the zing all the time and, like, crunching in on everything. I think he's doing them whole, like, stem and all, because he never mentions, like, him throwing it away. Maybe that's the filler. Maybe he's, pre- maybe he's <laughs> pre-stemmed them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he is a chef. He likes to have fine dining in his pot. The yeah. fact that it's it specifically says it's like a plastic bag, I don't. I think it's supposed to be a Ziploc bag. But, but, but to me, it's just like a CVS bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just, like, like a grocery a bag yeah. spilling out of his pocket. <laughs> it's like, hold on. Detective, are you all right? No, just, I gotta have a jalapeno. Just hold on a second. It's just such a fucking weird thing. It's a quick quirk to give his character more character than hot detective but chef. it is silly and unbelievable. Like, it does not make any sense. Um, <laughs> Crushing it in a rage is particularly oh, that was great. cheesy in a way. Did it. he hear the term jalapeno popper and, like, completely misunderstand? <laughs> yes. Yeah, whoever wrote this was like, Oh, jalapeno popper. Oh, it's like when you have a pocket full of jalapenos, you eat them, right? And somebody was like, yeah, 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 keys. That's it. Yeah, whatever. Can we also talk about his, like, biscuit recipe that he makes in the morning oh, after? He so spends gross. an evening with, okay, He the first crime scene he goes to is at his friend Patsy's restaurant. His ex-girlfriend? Uh, someone he sleeps with Someone sometimes? he does, it seems like a fuck buddy to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he, he goes to a restaurant because two people got poisoned there. And she seems all torn up about it and a little drunk. So he's like, let me drive you home. Eats jalapeno, burns her. And in the morning, he's like, let me make it up to you. <laughs> that, that's not in there. but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'll make you biscuits filled with jalapenos and raisins. Yeah, it just sounds gross. A raisin jalapeno combination. I don't know about that. Yeah, I'm, like I get the spicy sweet, but not those two things. There's like spicy wines, right? So I guess like old grapes. Uh, no, it sounds bad. Um, but so some other like weird things that make no sense. So the, actually the night in question that we were just describing so he's working with his ex-wife at the food truck. He gets a call and gets, you know, has to go to this crime scene during the dinner rush. And his ex-wife is like, God, fuck, damn it, not again. I can fucking do this all by myself. And he's like, oh, you know, duty calls. Sorry. Love you, too. And by the way, he and his ex-wife still say they love each other to each other. Which it was an amicable divorce. Amicable divorce. Good. You caught yourself I, before I know. I did. Sometimes I say word bad. It's okay. We all say word bad sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's just... A little weird. Um, I personally cannot imagine that scenario, I guess, is my point. Sure, it can happen. Yeah. But but in any case, he still is a dick. Yeah. So he's the highest order. Sorry, I gotta go deal with this crime, you know, which is fine, because, you know, it's okay. A crime is more important than sandwiches, sure. So he goes to the crime scene, he's there for maybe a couple hours, and then he's like, oh, I'm gonna go home with this, this girl I'm gonna bang and not go back and help. Marlena he, closed yeah, the fucking Yeah, she even calls down. him. She's like, I'm cleaning up here. The dinner rush went okay. I managed to survive. And he's like, 
Um, that's great. I gotta stay out. Gotta go. Gotta go detect some pussy. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> And so he goes home with Patsy, although they don't actually fuck, they just sleep together. Which, fine, I guess, but that's still a dick move that you didn't go help your business partner with your other job. At the very least, you could have driven over with Patsy and been like, hey, I just gotta help clean up for a minute. Like, sit in the car for like ten minutes or something. Or hang out with us while we clean up. Or I'll drop you off and come back because I have a car. Yeah, also this. Um... Yeah, so the main character just kind of sucks. Complete asshole. And he's, but he's made out to be, like, the guy you're rooting for the whole time. And it's like, no. Because he's not. sexy and he's a detective chef. He can balance these two jobs that... <laughs> I'm assuming he's doing, like, gangbusters on the business side. Because lines out the door. Or rather down the street because there's no door on a food truck. But... It, yeah, I mean, there are doors for the staff to get in. You're not entering to order No, food. that's true. But anyway, like... Also, he's so hot, he changes in the street. Yeah, he, like, it literally talks about him just, like, taking off his food truck g- gear. And changing into his nice detective clothes point, in the street. At one point, he's described as working a shift in the food truck with his badge and gun still on. Yes! His fucking belt. Like, take the sidearm off, buddy. I'm not, like... Yeah, I... I don't know. I don't think this is a thing, but I, something about bullets next to hot oil yeah, makes me nervous. Well, just, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you don't... You, don't you could need take that. the gun belt off. Yeah, you really could. Um, Lock it up in the car or something. I don't know. Throw it in the fridge. Yeah, something. yeah. Just put. I hang would it up feel kind of threatened if I walked up to a food truck and I was like, "Can I have a, a raisin and jalapeno biscuits?" <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. I please don't. <laughs> please don't shoot me. Um, there's some other weird things like he talks about uh, how owning a. Um, <laughs> so let me get to the page. How oh, owning uh, the food truck is like, I don't know, he thinks he's like a super cool guy because of it. And he says, um, Caleb used to fantasize about opening a real restaurant of his own someday, but he's gotten used to the speed and street cred that comes only from running a hoppin' food truck. <laughs> like, what? That's another line that reads like the back of a book to yeah, me. and it also just reads like somebody out of touch with reality. Like, I just... Um, uh, you know, I guess it, is, are food trucks cooler because it's a truck? Uh, yeah, like, I, I oh, guess. Your, your lame ass restaurant is stationary. Yeah, it what? Does it guzzle go gas <laughs> while it serves food? You, people have to come to you to get the food. <laughs> <sighs> so old. <laughs> yeah. All Get food. with the times. Food has to be on wheels now. Is this where I can t- to mention the fact? <laughs> this is where I can mention the fact that James Patterson described bookshots as Uber for books. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I, that I, doesn't make sense. I think because it's app and Uber is app, therefore <laughs> book app is Uber book. <laughs> Wait, so so he's saying like. Oh, you can summon a book to you, like with Uber, you can summon a car, but like they already have that. There you can are summon a book- strange book to you. <laughs> <laughs> that might hurt you. <laughs> Five stars, <laughs> though. I mean, Killer Chef is pulling up now. Uh, make sure you check the title and author page to make yeah, the right make book. Sure it's the right one. Don't just get into any old book shot now. No, don't. <laughs> okay, so there's, there's, so there's three murders in the book. Of three random couples across three different restaurants. He meets another lady who was the ex-wife of the first murder victim that died in Patsy's restaurant. Her name's Andrea, and she's like a sultry author who like used- super rich, like trust fund lady. Yeah, she like hangs out on a balcony and reads and drinks and writes books in New Orleans. So. And he interviews her and immediately like is like, oh man, I bang this one true, and then he, he does can't, later. He can't keep it in his pants <laughs> nope. at all. And but he 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 also admits like when he's first interviewing her, the whole reason he's there is because she's a possible suspect. Yep. And so was Patsy. And yet he just can't stop going home with women that are fucking suspects in a case. How would anyone allow what police look, I like I know police are shit and all, but like I still think When the police is a chef as well, the things get blurred. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on in New Orleans? Like, New Orleans, you got some problems down there. You have fucking detective chefs. Your detective Popping chefs are jalapenos. fucking everybody covered in oil. <laughs> like, I just I can't. Just spicing everyone up real good in the extremely haphazard way. And I... Okay, so there's three murders at three different restaurants. Yeah, Andrea uh, was married to the first dude that died. Then, come, come to find out later, she was also... 
on the DL dating the second guy that died. So then, you know, Chad, not Chad, Caleb. <laughs> might as well be Chad. <laughs> Chad. Chad Lib is like, oh, no, maybe she really is a suspect. But, like, she wouldn't be telling me this if she were if she were the suspect, right? Oh, better fuck her to make sure yeah. that he fucks her. If she doesn't flinch when I give her the old jalapeno finger, I know she's innocent. Yeah, that's right. That's how it works. It's, like, it's like a witch, right? Yeah. Like, it's like she, didn't, she didn't burst into flames. So, uh, like, you might be wondering, well, how does, you know, how do we eventually get to the bottom of the case? It's really helped when some guy just stands outside the killer chef food truck for Caleb to chase down conveniently. Yeah, this guy shows up and Caleb chases him. Hey, I'm related to the plot. I figured I'd just stand here and make it easy for everybody. <laughs> Yeah, it and, seems like you weren't going to get around here. You were too busy spicy fingering everybody yeah. around town, and I'm a dude, so you weren't probably going to get to me unless, like, you know, you decided to bend the other way for a bit. But I just figured I'd make it every easier on everyone. I'm going to stand outside, hang around. I'm going to look really sketchy. I'm going to have a hat and heavy sunglasses on, a black hoodie. Um, so Caleb chases this guy and arrests him, and his name is like albatross something yeah it's like freddy albatross green or whatever yeah. but i was like he's a known drug user so therefore he's automatically yeah they're like oh he's a petty criminal he's done he's the a drugs. junkie he's a, it's definitely him yeah especially they like they let him go at first because there's not a clear cut Caleb just tackles him he's like why were you looking at my food truck but, like they literally fucking put the word albatross in this guy's name yeah and Caleb even looks at it and goes oh what a weird name and it's like Jesus Christ do you you don't need to spoon feed spoon feed me the concept that this guy is obviously not the killer and then the, the reason they go and arrest him finally is because the I, the one woman who Caleb does not get de- like want to get down with because even all the customers at the food truck that are ladies are always fawning over him and yeah, he asks right, them if they right want hot his, beef. Yeah, yep, uh, he, yep. He asks them if they want some hot beef. And they're like, all about it. They're totally, muscles, they're totally they, down with it. They leave him their phone numbers written in lipstick on napkins. Anyone, the, anyway, the one lady that's like over that shit, it's like she's charming because she's like too old and like past all that stuff. Um, and she decrypts some like security footage or something. She she does the you know enhance enhance. She enhance. says she manually fig- figured out the hex key for some kind of encryption. That was on a phone of one of the dead guys, the she, last dead guy. You can't manually guess a hex encryption no. key for some app. I don't think you can. You, uh, you, you would have to. That's like so many <laughs> millions of combinations. You can't just figure it out. It would be like a lucky guess, if anything. Yeah, so that's another thing that's odd. Anyway, she fi- sees the, <laughs> the albatross at the second restaurant leave immediately after two people get poisoned. Oh, but that, that had nothing to do with the encryption on the phone. That was just security footage. Yeah, the encryption on the phone thing is later. Yeah, you're you're yeah. right about that. Anyway, she has security footage earlier. Yeah, yeah. And she, the the, the guy, albatross guy is there. He leaves shortly after the murder. And that's the, enough reason for Caleb to go arrest the guy. They go to his house. And he's got a map of, like, the all the murders that have happened so far, like, pinned in the thing. Yeah, he just has, like, he has a bunch of Hi, I'm the obvious criminal here. Yeah, it's just, it was pretty obvious. Like, it's just so obvious that he's not the murderer. He's just a guy collecting information about the murderers because he's curious about them. Well, he's not that because he's actually dropping off the vials or something. Yeah, so they find out that he he's the one dro- who dropped off the poison to all the restaurants. But he's like, I don't know who hired me because I'm just, I don't know, I'm so full of dr- the drugs that I don't know. And I was like, what? That really is how they put it. He's like, yeah. I don't know, man, I just needed a fix. I just needed the money. I don't know who told me to do this. Like, where are you finding the drop poison off somewhere for me job? Is that on Craigslist or some yeah. shit? Like, Yeah, it's on Silk Road. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Silk Road's been around Drop while, this but, strange you know, box off for me. It's on one of the other dark webs. Uh, one of the... Anyway, he gets arrested and pinned for all the murders, but Caleb knows something isn't right. Well, because because it doesn't make any sense that he would have this, like, fancy synthetic poison, and they know that somebody must have put him up to it, and they were like, well, where'd you get him? And he was like, I don't know, like, under a rock here and a bush there. So, like, you know, there was no direct contact between him and the person, but, I, yeah, the whole I don't know who did that, and then they never follow up on that. It's just, he says he doesn't know, and then they never put, they never, like... But also, he's not the one that, like, poisons the people either. No. He just drops it at the restaurant. Yes. So someone is poisoning the people, but needlessly putting a middleman in to get poison. I'm assuming this person is dropping off the poison. 
right? For him to pick it up? Yeah, Albatross is dropping it off at the location so that the actual Who murderer... put the poison for Albatross to get in the first I place? I don't know! It's the same... Per- Paris, this is what I mean. Yeah, it's the same person needless. that's doing the murders yep. who says, okay, I left the poison here. I need you to bring it to the restaurant. Why wouldn't you so just walk into the I, restaurant with it? So I can come <sighs> get it later to yeah. poison the people. Yeah, why wouldn't you just have it on you? Like, you're going to be touching it later anyway. You're going, if you're going to be doing the poisoning anyway and you have to poison the things... Yep. You're going to have to get near the food with the poison anyway. Yep. So what's the point of hiring this guy to drop it off just so you can frame him or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, probably, but, like, it it still doesn't make sense because then when they so they then they try to then they try to make you think it's like it's then they try to make you think it's Andrea and then they're like oh no it's Patsy Patsy first because okay here's another not to interrupt you but I really need this fucking detail to come out here he's staking out Andrea's place and he's waiting for someone like that might be Andrea to leave or something and he sees someone jogging by or out in a Wisconsin football team hat be- and Andrea is the only person, because she has all this Wisconsin football memorabilia or whatever. And he but- follows this person because he realizes, oh, she's going towards my food truck. And indeed, this person breaks into the, the Killer Chef food truck and tries to murder Marlene because it's really Patsy who decided to murder Marlene because he's the ex-wife of Caleb, her fuck buddy. Because she heard Caleb say he loved you to Mar- he loved her to Marlene. And she was wearing the hat because the actual murderer gave her that hat that he stole from Andrea. Why was Patsy anywhere near the actual murderer? I, I don't know. Why well, was she near Andrea's house? I don't know why she was near Andrea's house. Well, I mean, they all it's all the French Quarter. It's not a big area. But, um, no, so the, the actual murderer is a guy who is literally only mentioned in, like, Five sentences in the first three pages of the book. He's a sniveling maybe? like city arts director. Like he yeah. like is like a publicist slash like like he gets celebrities to come and like hang around yeah, and live like in the, New Orleans. He, he's like the cultural director or something of the city. And Caleb fucking hates him and he's sniveling. And he's in love with Andrea. This guy's name is Tariq the Tarantula ba- Bashar Bashir. I forget. Um, and he's in love with Andrea and obsessed with her. But you don't. But there's none of this until the literal last three pages of the book. When he's holding a gun to Andrea's head. Yeah, at her Why? house. Why? I don't know because it, it's the classic scene in all those movies where the good guy gets to the bad but guy right he, in the nick of time. If he did all these murders because he loved her, like she re- did, she reject him, and he was like, "No, I, I don't." But they don't dumped know. all dumped Andrea too, so it's not like he's competing with them. Yeah. He's killing them because they hurt Andrea? Maybe. Or they just because they fucked once? Or something Maybe. like... Maybe. I, I don't think they even... She even had sex with all of them. I think she said, like, I went out with them. Yeah, because the last guy, I don't even think... She, was she even... Did she even fuck that last guy? Yeah, no, she no, she went on, like, one date with him. Oh, I yeah, think. yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, it's very unclear. And then, Andrew, you know, at the end, Andrea's like, Oh, yeah, I guess I should have known when I got all those love letters from a creepy fan... Call like, and they were all signed like the tarantula, and it was like, well, if there's a guy in your town called the tarantula, why didn't you put that together? That's kind of weird. Especially since you know Tariq. Yeah, because like, you didn't just meet him for the first time. No, and it just it just didn't make any sense because he is literally, like I said, literally mentioned for a few sentences at the very beginning of the book, and they just talk about how he's like, yeah, sniveling and annoying, and you know, gets in the way of police business when it involves celebrities. And then there's literally nothing about him until the last two pages. Of oh the my book. god, it's Tariq because we have to have like a cheap Law and Order twist on this thing. Yeah, where it's not the first person. It's also not Patsy who just was there to like momentarily have a cat fight in front of Caleb so he can be like, yeah, hot. Yeah, but except Which she Marlena really brought... is kind of like for a second. Well, I think. except she brought a fucking knife and was going to actually stab Marlena. And she like she does like Patsy doesn't face any punishment even though she does does this in front of a New Orleans police officer. Yes. He's like, ah, that's fine. Ah, you yeah, ladies always, always, you lay, oh, always, always fighting, fighting over, over me. me. Yeah. How about you try to stab her again? That was kind of hot. <laughs> yeah, actually, and we can uh, wrestle and stuff, yeah, and I'll grab your boobs you know, or something. All, yeah, and I'll like, uh, you know, just let's just rub all the pinky juice all <laughs> over each other while we're at Yeah, yeah, you know, you know how I like it. <laughs> um, there were some other, some other 
weird stuff like a detective accessing private information about a case on his cell phone. Seems like a huge security risk. Um, they do the creepy thing where they only describe people of color um, and they describe their skin as like uh, something like a delicious food. That's gross. That happens in this book. Some other tasteless lines like quote, sweating like hookers in church, really tasteless. Like we talked about earlier, they also use uh, the pejor- pejorative term for Romani people all over a couple of places in this book. That's uh, a New Orleans flavor. Yeah, I was just Racism. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I don't know. He also caught, he says when he gets called about one of the, like the second or third, mur- the third murder, he's like, Oh, man, why can't you get one of the other Ds on it? And he means, like, the other detectives, but I don't think anyone says that. Like, why can't you get one of the dicks on it? I don't know. It's just that's But weird. dick is a slang term for detective, so it no, I know. kind of lines up, I and, guess. Uh, they try to... They, I don't know. There's a scene... Why don't you get Ds nuts on the case? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> as well have said that but they also use a SWAT team when they go to arrest that petty criminal and that makes no sense you wouldn't have a fucking SWAT I guess they had the budget and they were like Uh, well we bought all these bulletproof vests and assault rifles gotta use them on this bookshot somewhere (laughs) it's just to make it cooler I guess I yeah so that's pretty like we've gone through all of the content in the book it's all there it's all done like you didn't we didn't even really like gloss over anything except like a couple of various co-workers that he interacts with like the morgue guy yeah and it's like uh, he gives some of those like jalapeno raisin biscuits to to like bribe him to let him see the body earlier or something there's um a couple other restaurant owners and and like restaurant workers that he knows that are named i mean yeah, like it's, it's a it's a Law and Order episode without the order. <laughs> yeah, and without and any of the lovable characters. No like, iced tea. There's no iced tea. Yeah, I was gonna say there's no iced tea. There's no Mariska Hargitay. Like, uh, yeah, he doesn't even have like a police chief up his ass about like you got to stop eating jalapenos on the scene, <laughs> but, Rooney. If I get one more call about a weeping <laughs> eye, I'm gonna have your ass, Rooney. <laughs> like, you know, give me your gun and your badge. What do you mean you left him in the food truck? Yeah. <laughs> What do you mean you serve them on a po' boy? I can't, we can't keep doing this. Uh, yeah, and then there's this... Does this sandwich taste bullety to you? <laughs> no, but these fries are awfully badgy. <laughs> yeah, and, and then they try to pull at your heartstrings by telling you the, the brief backstory of Marlena and Caleb's marriage. And it was like... They met, they dated for a few months, Marlena got pregnant, so they had a shotgun wedding in the park, and then they opened up a cafe. Uh, miscarried stand. a bunch of times, so yeah, no she had, a bu- she had a bunch of miscarriages, and that broke their marriage, and then, but they remained, free. they had a party to announce their divorce, because they were like, we love each other as friends, and it's wholesome. I don't know fi- why I know, that's up. fine. I'm fine with that being in a in a uh, no, book no, shot, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I am too, but it's... People can be friends after relationships, it's a possibility. I agree. I agree with you, and I think it is a possibility. But that you would then go on to run a business with them and still tell them that you loved them, I feel like is while they too routinely much. fuck off and leave you with all of the work. Yeah, at the I, food truck business, and they come in and just reap the half of the profits while they're out fingering other ladies with their jalapeno fingers. Yeah, and not even solve and like really half acidly solving murders. And then at the end, you kind of like invite him for a threesome with one of his new girlfriends. Oh no. I no, let's read that last sentence and see how we feel about it. It's um, him and it's like Andrea, right? Who's like? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me. Let me uh, how does Andrea get away with it? Wait, wait a second. For the second time in an hour, Caleb holds a woman in shock, but this time he needs the comforting as much as she does. I can't believe I didn't see it sooner. Tariq has access to every kitchen in the city, and he knows every bit of gossip when it comes to the rich and famous. Every debt, every feud, every affair. But I don't understand. Why did he fix it on you? Andrea's holding him tightly. I saw him at parties, and he'd read my books. I used to get fan letters from a stalker, always signed The Lovin' Tarantula, but I never made the connection. <laughs> he and Monty once had a public battle over some luxury apartments Monty refused to knock out for public housing. I never thought it would come to this. Marlena rushes into the room, now filled with police waiting to... <laughs> Sounded like Marlena was filled with police. <laughs> I got all these cops in me. Can you help me out, please? 
so never. full of <laughs> blue. No. no. <laughs> never a favorite with the New Orleans Police Department. Tariq has been handcuffed and unceremoniously thrown into a squad car. Caleb, my God, you scared me half to death, left me with that crazy woman, and now I find out you're chasing down a madman all by yourself. Caleb smiles broadly at his two favorite women. Fuck what Patsy, you, by what, the way. What do you, Fuck Patsy. Yeah, yeah, even though he said he loved her two minutes ago. <laughs> Fuck her. <laughs> what do you say when all this is over? I whip us up a couple killer sandwiches and we go listen to a little jazz. <laughs> Marlena smiles and nods at Andrea. I think that sounds like the perfect end to a crazy night. Yeah, they're going to go have a threesome. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. She smiled and nodded at Andrea. And w- Yeah. That's the thing right yeah, there where yeah, I'm like, are fun. you, like, it, he solved the case, so let's have a threesome about it. This is terrible. This is an <laughs> affront to literature. It should not exist. No, just get this the fuck out of here. I and, will say, God. this format is pretty good for Terrible Book Club because it's a quicker read than most other things. Yeah, I came here, I read this in two hours while kind of half-watching SNL <laughs> and eating stuffed shells, so... You didn't miss anything either. No, I did not miss a beat. It's true. Um, So uh, maybe we'll do another one of these, maybe <sighs> in a different genre, because there's other ones, that, you know, they're all genre fiction, so I wish they could do like a fantasy one, just like a real fucking quick... <laughs> Yeah. Like, One oh off man, D&D they brought that dragon, they fucking used the magical staff to see the princess, and oh boy, there's a pile of gold. <laughs> and the, the main character can't stop pulling out magic mushrooms from his plastic <laughs> CVS bag in his pocket. Anachronistic, yes, but... <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, no, it's magic mushrooms from his leather pouch, yeah. tired, you know. <laughs> Can we fix it, Paris? <sighs> I mean... I mean, the bare bones, chef poisonings, it just seems murder dumb case, and uninteresting. I guess, but I don't want to like. <laughs> no, I mean, like, like I said, it's not even a killer chef. No. It's a, it's a, like a city arts liaison. Yeah, killer city arts liaison. Yeah, it's it's just really lame. It's all really lame. And the char- the main character is so hateable, and it's not even intentional. That's the funny thing. It's not like you, it's not like at least the you know the silent patient where you're meant to hate the main character. Or I mean, there are any number of books like that. Uh, though I did not like the silent patient. At least it was aware that it was trying to make the main character hateable. This book thinks it's making a good main character, and he it's making a horrible Horny asshole. Horny detective chef is just uh. spicing everyone up all the time. Yeah, just the ho- oh, fucking jalapeno thing. I can't get over jalapeno that. Jalapeno figures are really... Like, yeah. I can't, we, we're not going to stop harping on that. No. We've wrung the joke completely dry no, of all just, the spicy juice now. No, it's just it's too weird. It's safe to touch your eyes again no. with this joke. No, it's not. Don't touch your eyes. <laughs> don't touch any genitals. I don't, don't want to fix it. Even if I can't no. fix it, I really don't want to put in the effort to try to fix this thing. No, because this fucking author or this crisis author, this <laughs> man who does not even exist, the entity known as James Patterson, does not need or whatever money. Or Keys. Or, uh, yeah, maybe Jeffrey Keys needs money. I don't know, man. But, like, you can write something better than this, I'm sure. Ugh, I, the, the fact that it's, like, who needs the book to be over so quickly? Yeah, well, like you were saying, yeah, who is, like, oh, man, I'm gonna, like, like I said, unless you're in the hit 90s movie Read, <laughs> where you need to finish a book in 90 minutes, like, I... I don't know. So maybe like you, you know, last minute assignments for your like school book, thi- like you know, you're, you're supposed to do a book report. Oh god, no one's gonna but assign the, you a book shot in school. I fucking know. I don't think they assign, like. Do you, there used to be things in my school where like you could read any book and do a book report on it. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And like maybe if it's like the night before, mm, and you need that extra credit to pass. Or something. Sure, like that's the only thing this would be good for. But even then, I don't know. Like Slaughterfire House Five is almost as quick. It's pretty short. It's like a hundred. It's like two hundred pages, but the font's definitely smaller, so it's probably longer than that. And it's definitely more of a heady read. So I didn't like Slaughterhouse Five. Really, that was my yeah, favorite font. A good book. I don't like Kurt Vonnegut. All right. I'm sorry. You can have an opinion, I guess. <laughs> oh, thank you, Chad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Um. <laughs> Man, don't read this. Don't read any of these bookshops. M- much like that bookshop lady, you told me like I don't understand who why this is here. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, there are so many other trashy short books out there. You don't need to keep read more. The whole, read more a whole James Patterson. It's fine. Yeah. You can come back later. 
I don't even care if that's like the kind of thing. If you really just need popcorn thriller for yeah. your book reading, do you, baby? Like, read all the James Patterson shit, but don't settle for this lazy lover of yeah, a book. Yeah, man, you gotta keep that Lizzo energy going right <laughs> to your books. Like, don't settle. Dude, <laughs> it's fine. Get Settle in for a book that will treat you right. Yeah. And take as long as it needs to get you off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and if, you know. Uh, don't, don't fucking write these. This was, this is, yeah, like I said, an Thorough insult. Thorough thumbs down. An insult. To, to even literature. like popcorn thrillers. Yeah, like an insult to even bottom barrel books. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. This is the Ghost of Future Paris, here to pose a question to you. Have you ever wanted to hear me and Megan from Ono oh Lit Class play an RPG and then have it turned into an improv comedy audio drama? No? Yeah, me neither. But it did happen and does exist. So if you want to hear that, you can head over to the Rolling Misadventures podcast and find the episode entitled Bear Animator. Yes, I named the episode and yes, it is exactly what you think it is. Ghost of Future Paris out. All right, Paris. Uh, well, um, we're, do we want to do? You know, you know what? We could do good media like uh, thing. Yeah, like sure. I was even... gonna say I could also embarrass myself with Power Rangers game again because I'm already. Uh, I can't buzzed. really do that with this computer screen up in front of here because the file with all the names is on my computer. Oh, uh, so God if damn I put, it. you'll be just be able to see under which category it falls under. It's not on my phone, so oh, uh, that would be cheating at well, this. No, test. I would just hold the bookshot in front of my face. See, the bookshot is used as an eye <laughs> shield. You see, that's no fun. It's, I, I don't want to see your face while you're trying to guess. Well, I can do this. <laughs> you can still see Laura. You, 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 my you listeners can't see. Paris just like sort of lampshading her eyes with the book spine. Yes. You can totally peek under there. No, I can't. It's fine. My vision We're is gonna bad. do the good media segment instead. Okay. Because I lost my life last week to oh. Fire Emblem Three Houses. And then before that you lost your life to the Expanse. Yes, I read the Eighth Expanse book, which is uh, which is a book which I suppose I should talk about. I loved it actually. It was a very action packed, fast paced segment of the Expanse series. I can't wait for book nine now. I waited until the paperback edition of this book came out because I wanted to match with all my other books. I'm probably going to listen to the audiobook of Book Nine because I want to find out what happens. You know, Expanse isn't super deep. I also binge watched the TV show on Amazon. Also pretty good. Worth a watch if you don't want to read the books or, you know. But it's. I like the books a little bit more, of course. Um, yeah. It's good stuff. And then Fire Emblem Three Houses was the anime school teacher game that I played for a whole week. I lost 53 hours of my life to it. Chris, that is absurd. I was absurd. almost late to a dinner with my girlfriend because I was in the middle of a climactic battle and realized I had to go catch the bus down the street. You know what, Chris? First Shameful. it was a turnip, now it's Fire Emblem. Shameful. You know, you're losing some boyfriend points. I really... I was I was on time. All right. And I told her... I still told her about it because I wanted to explain to her why I was, like, slower in returning text messages. I'm sorry, but... Wow. The Black Eagles needed more tutoring for me. It also really <laughs> got me because of the teacher aspect. I'm doing more lesson planning in this game than I was. No, that's not that's, that's why. I do a lot of lesson planning for my guitar students. But it kind of, I don't know, scratched that weird itch that I have as a, as a teacher person, I suppose. And it was a little persona e. There's also a crossover Persona and Fire Emblem game that I almost bought, which I think is going to be my next video game hole I'm going to fall into. Oh, boy. So we'll see how that goes later. But that was my good media. If you like strategy RPGs with anime characters in them that has decent voice acting, try Fire Emblem mm -hmm. Three Houses. And if you like sci-fi books, I thoroughly recommend the Expanse series. It's real good stuff. Paris, what have you been up to with media lately? Well, I finally finished Memories of Ice, book Hooray! three, the Malzahn series. It's now a memory of <laughs> You know what's funny is Chris Chris sounds so joyful, but he was actually pissed because now I want to read the next book, House of Chains, and that means he has to fucking read it. I don't have to read shit, Perry. You, you can't said, force me. Well, I've already recruited a friend, my friend Ashley, to start reading the series, and she's almost done with Gardens of the Moon. 
So guess what? Now you got two of now us. Now I have to fucking talk to someone else about Anamanda Rake, the dragon person. Who no, was... I needed someone else to bitch to because you were like, I don't want to read House of Chains. And I was like, fine, it's I'm going to make someone else read Paris. <laughs> There's 50 million things happening. They're all very disp- disparately connected. I know. We're proving Bookshot's right right now. Kind of. No, I love Malazan. I did. Oh, so it's, it's been oh, I will say book three good. was my favorite Malazan book because there's like a h- bunch of death metalist crap things happening in there. Like weird creature that's constantly hugging you and torturing you with its hugs all the time. Oh, yeah. And there's that those two sentences. The, that I uh, get like back. The, the, the battle scene where they finally get to like the leader of the army and he's like amongst like a bunch of skinned people in this like dining room in a castle. Yeah, there's like can- weird cannibal army and stuff. There's also the front line of the army who fuck people who are dying to get their. I, by dead- the way, spoilers yeah. for Malice <laughs> Book 3. Uh, I mean, I feel like you learned that stuff within the first couple hundred pages, but. That's the kind um, of stuff that's going on in Memories of Ice. And then House of Chains starts throwing more stuff about the tarot deck or something the, oh yeah the, the deck of deck of dragons sure i don't i i read the malazan books like five years ago paris all i remember from those is quick ben is cool tatter sale is cool whiskey jack is hilariously cliche um magic is a place yeah i just remember and there's so many different kinds of gods and yeah. celestials and like ascended <laughs> beings that i can't fucking keep track of I know, them. I just remember, Especially when people's names change between uh, books. Yeah, they do. Uh, I remember texting you and being like, why is this happening? What the fuck? This is so dumb. I hate this. And you're like, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> I was like, oh, you don't remember the whole back half of this book. All right. No, I fucking don't because I'm trying to find like a through line and even books will co- like completely different people that happen like out of time scale from like the last book. Because I think, like, book three happens during book two. With yeah, which I did not pick up on at yeah. all. Totally didn't. Nope. Because they were talking about things that happened in book two. So I was like, oh, this is clearly after. I mean, you know, for the things that happened in that timeline. Anyway. On the on the other anyway, hand. Anyway, it was good. I'm glad I'm done with three. I'm trying to catch up on all the other books in my pile. I will say there is no deeper lore than, Mal- like, Steven F. Erickson oh. goes in on every, he's an, like an anthropologist. So yes. he goes in on every last goddamn detail yep. about any particular people. It's like, not even like there's like separate fantasy races. There kind of are, but at the same time, it's really just like different geographically located no, people. No, dude, he does such a good job of not being racist. And that's, like, one of the things I that's love about That's the Malazan. major positive about Malazan yeah. is it doesn't have, like, your D&D ass. It's like, well, all orcs are strong and big, and they get plus two strength. So, yeah. <laughs> and they're obviously, like, an anagram for this real race in life, and, you know, which is always sketchy when yeah, you can feel a book sure. doing that. He's much, much better about that kind yeah. of a thing. Any other good media? Yeah, so I just finished uh, Life of Trees, which is... Uh, Kind of a, a pop science book about how cool trees are. I will agree. I, trees are fucking badass. Trees are fucking rad. Uh, and it's just about how trees have... Um, how trees communicate with one another, how they grow and develop, um, how they have a form of memory and... Communi- you know, and They tickle each other's branches <laughs> to communicate. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it was pretty cool, but I didn't... It was... Honestly, the writing was really boring because... It was originally written in German and then translated in into English, which, you know, will always kill a work when it's translated, I feel. And again, it's a pop science book, so it's written for general the general public, so I wasn't super engrossed with it. I also knew a lot of the things already in the book, but the new things I did learn were. Trees cool. had leaves, you don't gotta tell me science book. <laughs> no. No, just sometimes it, it definitely was holding your hand. It was like man, trees have rings and it shows you how old they are. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but no, no. I mean, some of the stuff was cool and I didn't know before. Um, Did you know trees start as smaller trees? Did you know they also can't move? Trees have to stay in the same spot <laughs> forever. Oh my God, it's not that bad. Um, Think so about that- it. If you had to stay in one spot forever and get all your food through the sun. That would be weird, right? Uh, but no, I mean, it was... Uh, anyway, I think it's worth a read, especially if you don't know shit about plants. Um, you probably learned some cool stuff. Uh, you know, turns out being outside around trees literally makes you healthier and happier. It's just how it works. Get some green in your life. Get I should some do trees. more of that, for sure. Yeah. I, I keep telling by. you to go outside, Chris. Rebecca says the same thing. There was an arboreum <clears throat> that we walked by near BM, the Boston Medical Center. Mm. That was quite beautiful. There was some purple flowers over there that were 
amazing. Yeah, get your flowers on, man. I can't even see color, and I could tell they were purple just by like the particular quality that they had there. <laughs> Which I'm totally colorblind, but I can like kind of guess what some colors might be. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's good. I'm I'm I actually have a rare eye condition where I am mostly colorblind. <laughs> yeah, so, you're colorblind and also legally blind. Most people like they when they're colorblind, they can it's like a couple of colors they mix up. I'm all fucked up. Oh yeah, whenever because I remember the times where you've been like. Paris, I think this looks good, right? And then I look at it, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like all these weird neon colors don't go together. So cause I, it, I make everything neon because that's how I can, like, perceive yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's, just, like, the only really color bright. spectrum I can see is, like, 80s. <laughs> <laughs> um, after, uh, then I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to finish Extremity Retained by Jason Netherton. It's a death metal kind of history memoir book where... Uh, he goes through and interviews people from, you know, some some of the OG death metal bands from the 80s and 90s. I started reading it a while ago, and I got, like, a quarter of the way through it, and then got absorbed into other things. I also have um, these really, these old um, 90s, like, sci-fi compendiums, and they have George R. R. Martin stories in them. Oh, shit. So All right. I bought them at, like, a, at the... I should them. give you Armageddon Rag to read. No, I, please don't give me any more books. Um, so on top, so I got two of those. I've got the Extremity Retained. I've got these two, um, like, black metal anthropology zines called Becoming the Forest, uh, editions two and three. One was sold out, so I couldn't buy it. Um, but I know one is about epigenetic memory and birch trees, which is something I really care about. Hello, I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hi! <laughs> I run an Instagram about epigenetics of birch trees specifically. It's interesting. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a black metal nerd and I love nature shit. As, yeah. So anyway, I got that. And then finally, I have um, this fantasy book compilation um, put out by Jason Tarpey of Eternal Champion. Um, and it includes, it's like a bunch of people in metal bands I really like that also write fantasy and sci-fi. So it's like the dude from Eternal Champion, um, uh, Mike Scalzi from Slaufeg, and um, our friend from Cauldron Born. Oh. He Howie wrote- Bentley. Yeah. He's back. Yeah, all right. So Maybe. we'll see if he has gotten better. Maybe. Um, but it's got a lot of notable uh, metal musicians in it, and I'm really excited to read it. Because it's a bunch of short stories. We, you know, it's a bunch of book shots all yeah, tied together. There you go. See? Um, yeah, it's a bunch of short stories, and I'm just really excited to see what the heavy metal community has to offer uh, in terms of writing. And if any of it really sucks, I'm sure we'll talk about it on the show. Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think that is actually it for my pile. Um, so I'm hoping to work through that before I get into House of Chains. Yeah, yeah. That, that, you got a lot of books to to go through. I'm working my way through uh, the Name of the Wind by Patrick oh, Rothfuss. Oh yeah, I know. That's Started off pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, if you ever have a free spot, I would really like to see your opinion on Armageddon Rag. I actually think you'd think it was really dumb. Oh, probably because it's George R. R. Martin trying to write like like superheroes, right? No, no, that's Wild oh. Cards. Oh, oh yeah, yeah Armageddon yeah, yeah. Rag Sorry. is about him talking about like a '70s heavy metal band writing songs about like the end of the world. Wait, so it's just, it's, Chris, it's fucking, it's, it's fucking, that book we read, oh my god, the book we read with fucking, oh god, I can't remember Dark the Star? Yes! Is it just the better written version of that? Yes. Oh no! No. Yes, it's George R. R. Martin's Dark Star. <laughs> no! That is a and I really I prospect. I honestly only want to give it to you so I can get Paris renditions of the lyrics <laughs> of, of the many many uh, songs that just, George R. R. Martin. You just want me to sing them to you? Yes. Oh, sp- if oh, nothing else. Speaking of singing, singing them to you, uh, music because since we're talking about good media, um, I was introduced to um like an older seventies rock band that I didn't know about before called Big Star. Uh, and I really like them. So if you're into, I don't know, I feel like 70s rock stuff, if you're into like, not that Rush and Yes are super similar to this band, but like. No, you gave me one track. It's pretty around. Yeah. If you like Rush and Yes, that you'll yeah. like Big Star. Yeah. I was just like, oh shit, I'd never heard of this band before. Uh, yeah, my friend Peter told me about it and I was just like, how have I never heard of this band? And, um, 
the record that I listened to, I think it's just called Number One. I think. Um, it actually the if if y'all remember the show uh, that '70s show, the theme song is a cover of a Big Star song that is on that oh, record. Oh shit! Yeah, and so it started, and I was just like, "Turn on it, turn on it, hang it out, out down really, the street. really, yeah. yep, holy shit, yep, it's a Big Star song." And I was like, "Fuck, how did I? Know? I felt like such an idiot for not knowing." What <laughs> like the, that fucking opening riff hits, and like, oh shit, is it Eric and Donna gonna show up? <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. They were just uh, they're just really cool, and I was I was like, wow, I can't believe I didn't know about this band. So I'm just <laughs> passing that on to y'all. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other music I've been really into. God, I've just been on a fucking. I cannot stop listening to the Uncanny Valley by Perturbator. I don't know what it is that has been. Perturbator has like been. I didn't my realize getting, you were like a synthwave dude person like me. I like synthwave. Dude, yeah, too. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, it's synthwave is just like my getting shit done at work music. Like, Perturbator specifically is generally what I listen to when I'm like, oh god, I need to like merge a bunch of records in the database or do a bunch of database maintenance. I just have to do like a bunch of mindless tasks. You see that fucking like eighth note bass line like... Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. When I'm like just sitting there deleting queries by hand because... I'm a... That's the melody that's always on the top. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else knew that I've been super... I mean, I listened to... Oh, well, Chris. All right, listeners, we're going to listen to something together to, to... You know, maybe I should thank everyone first, and then we're going to listen to something together. Okay. So, um... So... <laughs> let's thank our patrons, because I've just been fucking wandering around vocally about... <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. All right, um, I'll, let me handle this part. <laughs> Okay. Thanks for our Patreon supporters, Dari, Greg, Will, Veronica, D, Jared, Lean, Senior, Jakub, Torben, <laughs> aka Duck King, Bobby Blackhead, Ayame, Jensina, Mayo Cat, Elliot, and Kieran. Jeez. Thank you for your support every month here to help make this podcast self sustaining. Um, we filed taxes. Yeah, I did our fucking taxes. <laughs> because hey, of yo, you. yo, we only lost twenty seven dollars last year. Great, honestly. Yeah, actually, that's, that's fine. Fantastic. Because nope, because if I don't have to report profits to the IRS, everything is golden. Yeah. So thanks. Right off. If you want to help support the show, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. We got a YouTube channel where you can leave a fucking boneheaded comment. <laughs> could you? Could someone please leave a nice comment? Someone did. Someone said Big Chungus says Bernie twenty twenty <laughs> under the latest one. <laughs> So I appreciate you, sir. Yes. I appreciate you, sir. Or ma'am, or them. <laughs> yes. Ma'am? Don't I actually recently started cutting out sir or ma'am out of my vocabulary. I used yeah. to say that all the time to service workers, and I realized that's kind of fucked up, actually. Yeah, I don't do I that. Because I definitely misgendered a person or two. Yep, and don't do it. that's bad. Good. I'm going to stop doing that. Yeah, fuck that shit. Um, you can subscribe on YouTube and leave a comment about how I'm an idiot for doing that, um, <laughs> because that's the quality of YouTube comments we've been getting, except for that one person. Um, you can become a patron. And give us money to keep doing this. And if you give us money, you get access to us watching movies. So you get like a Mystery Science Theater track. You have to find the movie yourself. Uh, but we recently watched The Art of Racing in the Rain. So that's there. One of our lost book episodes. Yeah. So if you didn't get a chance to listen to that, you can go around the, the track one more time oh. with us. With uh, a dog in tow. We also do video specials once in a while. We're actually, we got to record one soon. Uh, but there are four, five actually up there. Um, you know, there's so there's a lot of content. So if you give us five or ten dollars a month, there's plenty of content you get access to, and you can also give us a book to read that we will read for you. So. Yeah, once again, putting out the call for more patron recommendations. We got we actually two people recommended the same book simultaneously, which was yes. hilarious. Okay, so that's definitely happening. Yeah, uh, Kieran and Dari, y'all are on the same wavelength. Uh, you all both <laughs> message us like the same day within like two hours of each other with the same book. And I was like, whoa. Mind meld of fans happening yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Um, so yeah, you can become a patron. You can share the show with someone or tell someone about it. Hey, I got this show where these two barnyard animals curse at each other about <laughs> books that they didn't like. Yeah. If if that sounds like a thing, you can sell someone. But by all means, do it. Um, or you can just rate or review us on... I, I Apple Music a podcast you, any, you anywhere. Can find us on Twitter on the Twitter wall links. of a bathroom stall. Oh uh, yeah, I want to be on a bathroom stall wall. Someone make that happen. Yelp. Yeah, Yelp. Better I, Business Bureau. I don't no, know. No, no, Chris, don't call into the Phantom Gourmets. Uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris cannot read copy, and we are we are hearing that right now. Just avoiding the script and just saying weird shit. 
you can also contact us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Goodreads. You can send an email to terriblebookclub at gmail.com. If you're a patron, you can leave a post on our community page and we'll get to it like a month later because yeah, that pa- shit doesn't... Yo, Patreon notifications do not work. I am so sorry. I think it was Lynn left a message on there. I didn't see it for like six weeks because Patreon just didn't tell me it was there. Or if, uh, so yeah, I don't. I don't know. Patreon is I mean, bad. Leave something there. We'll we'll see it eventually. <laughs> yeah, just somehow. maybe not. Like if there's like a, if you're trapped in Keanu Reeves's read and you need our <laughs> advice, like don't put it there. If you need us to keep funneling book shots to you, please find another way. Just shots, 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 just book <laughs> shots, shots. <laughs> All right, so um, the last thing I'd like to do is I would like everyone to queue up a song called uh, Crazy Clown Time by David Lynch. I need I need Crazy Clown Time by... Actually, no, don't do that, because that's how you get a copyright strike on YouTube and other platforms. So this is Chris from years later in the future telling you guys that this is where the episode ends for now. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Terrible Book Club. Terrible Book Club is an independent podcast produced by your hosts, Paris and Chris. Sound design and audio editing by Chris, with sound effects and music by Epidemic Sound and sometimes also Chris. Our theme song is Kiss by Yearn, which is, you guessed it, actually, also Chris. You can find more of his soothing synthy sounds on Bandcamp at yearn.bandcamp.com. Do you want us to review a book of your choice on the show? Do you want access to some extra audiovisual weirdness? If so, become a patron at patreon.com slash terrible book club. If you'd like to send us a one-time tip instead, you can do that at ko-fi.com slash terrible book club. You can also support TBC for free by sharing the show on social media, following our accounts on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Goodreads, telling your friends about your favorite episode, or by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or anywhere else on the internet. To send us book recommendations or your adorable pet photos, send an email to terriblebookclub at gmail.com.